Wow, it's all going so well. Now we've got a little burnt bottom, but. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what is going on guys? It's Ben from the Parker Brothers and welcome back to another fishing video. So today you join me um, in the new Milton area, new forest sort of area, and um, down my way, a lake called, it was the, the, the complex is called Orchard Lake Fisheries, and then you've got the lake, the particular lake I'm on, is called Jimmy's Lake. Now Jimmy's Lake is their sort of, um, specimen lake here if you like they, they they cater for all needs there's some match stuff up there as well which are long lakes where they do a lot of matches on so if that is something that you're really interested in guys have a look at their website check that out because like i said it really does cater for all needs there's a bit bit for everything a bit for kids up here they've also got good shower facilities um like a little food place up there and also a shop as well which is absolutely ram packed full of fish and tackle bait etc etc so it really is nice up here and it, like i said it caters for everybody's needs now, you join me up here with my good friend Chris, um, and we're here for the next we're here for the next sort of 24 hours. But I mean, we've probably got till I say 24. We've probably got till tomorrow evening. So I've got tonight until tomorrow, probably around five o'clock. Now I'm quite excited to get my teeth into the next um, sort of you know good few hours up here. Um, and like I said, I'm with Chris now. Chris. Um, as a man from your own heart, someone you haven't seen on the channel before, guys, but a proper sort of old school angler, been doing it for years. He's also made some um, YouTube videos as well, guys. And what I'll probably do is I'll put them in the description down below. Um, or if you type in his name in YouTube, you're probably going to find them. He's done some stuff on Farlows, all all over the show, all over the show. This this gentleman, he really is a good angler. So if you want to see that, guys, head over to his channel and go and check that out. Um, but yeah, we're here. I think we're going to touch on various things over the duration. We're going to touch on maybe um, what we've been doing, how we've been doing it, what bait we've put out, why we've put the particular bait out we've put out. Um, to be honest with you, I've managed one already. And before we go any further, what I'll do is, guys, I'm going to put that on the screen now. Sweet, so there it is, guys. First one for me at the Orchard Lake Complex here at Jimmy's Lake. I'm just, this, this particular lake I'm fishing. Only a small one. But my god have I worked hard for it. It's about £10, but some lovely scales up here. And I'm happy I've got off the mark and beat the plague so far. So there it is. Thank you very much, Mr. Mirror. And thank you very much, the Parker Bates. And this was on one of our new 15mm um, uh, sort of match of the hatch. Uh, they're white with flecking them, black flecking them. And it seemed to do the do. But like I said, my god, have we worked hard. <laughs> Let's get this one back. Happy days. So as you can see there, I had a little one this morning. Um, my God, did I work for it. I worked my little backside off. And um, 
in the end I had a small one this morning but I must have had a cup about this big and then I left the rock so I, I had a baited spot which is off the island I put quite a bit of bait in to be honest with you and then the left hand rod been out all night left hand rod this morning drop back bobbin just drops on the ground and I had a fish maybe nay big little common so I thought with that I'll move it on the margin because apparently the, gem the gentleman in this particular peg last week done really well on the margin so I thought you know what I'm going to put one over there with that about 20 minutes later my right hand rod bobbin hits blank pulls in and it nearly pulled my rod sort of twisted my twisted the back of my um, bank stick anyway I've landed this fish I must have been about 10 pound but had some nice scales on it and it was really nice to sort of if you like beat the blank or just to get one under your belt it puts a bit of confidence in you so there it is guys that is the intro that's where i am that's what i'm doing and um if you haven't seen me before my name's ben and i upload every sunday 7 30 to the parker brothers youtube channel now we have a live premiere everybody joins in they're all light like-minded people like myself there's a bit of banter in there but it's all it's all good fun and what we can do is watch the watch the video together and sort of take you on the journey together if you like and it's it yeah it really is nice because the response we've been getting over the duration of the last year has been crazy and we've had in excess of 300 people in that live chat on a sunday at 7 30 as well so without further ado Make sure you go down below guys, click that thumbs up button, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos going forward and hopefully myself and Chris can bring you an absolute banger. I'll see you in a bit. Before we go on as well, I thought I would quickly touch on uh, myself and Chris. Yes, they say completely different. Now he said to me, we had a good phone call prior and he said, because I know you guys love the foodie bits we do on the channel. Now we've done something different last night. Turned out all right, definitely need to refine them. Um, but we had Chicago Town pizzas last night. You know, like the little pizzas you get, you get two in a box, the little small ones. I think you put them in a the microwave, Chris, don't you? No, they are oven cooked. They are oven You cook them from frozen, is the key bit. <laughs> You cannot let them defrost in 30 degrees all day yeah. and then expect to get that. No, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you knew that. We, we were going to eat them to start with, but it was just too hot today. So, as you heard in the background there, we had uh, <laughs> we had these sloppy little pizzas, but they were lovely. Don't get me wrong, they were nice. I quite enjoyed mine, to be fair. But the way forward, and something I'm going to do going forward, is make sure you get them frozen. So, you bring them frozen, put them on the Ridge Monkey frozen, and what you'll find is because because it's frozen it will all say set a lot better obviously where's where I would completely fall out it was all sticking to the top of the pan and all sorts but what a great idea and something I'm definitely going to start using in my fishing going forward because I think in the winter time Chris made a valid point yesterday in the winter you're not going to have an issue with them obviously defrosting because it's going to be cold so that's definitely 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 being that I love pizza is something that I'm going to do over the winter period and something you guys should put in your armory as well Chicago town pizzas on the bank game over <laughs> so that was that um, what else did we do last night? we had some lovely cookies as well and like I said we sat there for probably four or five hours in the evening locking onto the water doing everything we could in our power to see what the fish were doing and obviously reacting to them and doing different things obviously in the end we were sort of chasing round fish a little bit yesterday we sort of said no we're going to put the boat we're going to put put the rods on the the spot and leave them but we still we saw we saw a lot of fish with our eyes right up against the island clear as day and not just against us our, our, our island they were sort of all over the lake and that's what i love about this particular lake because you can come anywhere at any time and you've got a good chance of fish because there's plenty of fish in it's around 400 yeah man. around 400 fish in the lake and there's some real scaly bangers in the mix and again in great more depth again if you go over to their website their social medias instagram uh, sorry facebook you'll see it on there and again what i'll do is guys i'll put their facebook in the description down below so you can keep up with the catch reports see what's coming in if you are down here guys and you do catch fish make sure you send them over to the facebook page as well so people can see what's coming out where they're coming out etc etc so that was the update for now i had to touch on that food from last night so now we're completing the loop now we're up to at the video at this point and like I said, I'm going to take you on my journey throughout the day today and um, going into tomorrow. So there it is, and I'll touch base with you very soon.
Right then guys, you join me in Chris's swim now. Just to the left of me, he's actually swimming. So in a second, I'm gonna take great advantage of going over and just um, sort of getting in his head a bit of why he's doing exactly what he's doing to obviously get a fish on the bank. So, I'm gonna pop over there now and have a quick chat. So you join me with Chris and uh, let's see what he's doing. How are you then, mate? Yeah, good man, just putting some bait out. Yeah. Um, yeah, just putting some boilies out in the spot. Um, real cool little way of doing it. If you get these like tapered spots, yeah. you can get away at relatively short range of putting boilie just straight in it. With no water or anything, it'll just go out nicely and it'll slow down just before it hits the cliff and the boilies will just sort of fly out. So rather than me dumping boilie directly on my rig, which I don't want to do, I'm quite happy for it to spread out a little bit. And what this does is it just sort of chucks the boilies out where the spot lands sort of spreads out maybe like a little foot, foot and a half area. So every time I'm spotting out, I'm spreading the bait out around my spot. Yeah, I love that, absolutely love that. So very clever, so there, so the baits, it flicked about five baits behind it. So like Chris just said there, now on the head, he's not just filling it in like one spot, like I'm doing with a spom. You haven't got the satisfaction of that, but with an, with an old school spot, it works absolutely. You were just being boilies, it all just flushes out straight away. You don't have to wait ages for the spot mix to clear out of the spot. It just, I think half of it comes out on the cast like just as the spot lands. And then the other cast, sorry, the other lot is just sort of flushing out the spot almost instantly. So it's, it's a real quick way of doing it as well. If you are fishing at range, Chris, and to just eliminate that from happening, what would you do to get round that? Um, put a bit of water in it or maybe like slop up the bait. Gotcha. So maybe like put some of the sauce around it, some of the magic dust. Sure. To bind it together. That makes sense. Then you'd have to be more patient with it coming out. You'd have to leave the spot there, flick it every now and again. Gotcha. To try and get water in the spot and allow that bait because it will come out quite slowly out of the spot. That makes complete it will sense. Spoil yeah, nice it now one. With spoms. It will flies out straight away, but either that will put a spom out. Yeah, happy day. Either way. Yeah, so there it, there it is. There's a bit more of an insight. And I like to say sort of an old school way of fishing, really, with a spod, not a spawn. Um, and the water, the, the, the wind, sorry, is trickling in Chris's swim. Absolutely beautiful out there, like. Look at that. But what I will do, once, um, once I've got the bait out there, yep. I want to be topping it up, keeping the noise going through the water. Yep. But I don't want to keep putting a, a full spod of, of boilie out every time. So. I've got boily, straight boily there going out to start with. Once the swim's rocking, I've just got this little slop here. So if I come in the bucket. Beatly mix, it's just it's got less bait in it, a lot more liquid. You know, to be fair, in the heat that's dried out a little bit, I'd probably have it even wetter than that. And then all I'm doing is just putting a bit in. I won't even fill it right up. You know, I'll fill it with all that. <laughs> Look at that, look at that. Yeah, lovely. And then as that hits the surface, you know, all the oils are going to be flattening it off, all the sauce is going to be dripping off the bait because it's going through the water. Yeah, I love that. It's just a nice way of, uh, you see how it flattens it off. Yeah, straight away. So Chris has been fishing the flat spot and our sauce product, or obviously anybody who watches the channel know what the flat spot is. The only way of putting it across is hemp oil to a different level it's absolutely crazy stuff and obviously the sauce is a pure liquid food so like Chris is saying it sends them signals from all the different levels of the water column trying to pull them fish down on the spot but like he said very well there not putting out too much bait and that's definitely something I'm going to put in my own armory because we all do it we turn up at a lake we fill the spawn to the brim absolutely fill it in. not all the time but a lot of the time and this is a clever way of getting bait out and not actually feeding them too much and trying to get a bite and you can see the flat spot forming there Again on the money every time. That definitely doesn't fall out the back, does it? Like you said, this. It it all in, doesn't yeah. it? The difference between the first cast with just the boilie where it's spreading out, yeah. flicking baits out. Now I love that, I like mate. That. Real clever way of fishing. So, like I said, guys, there's a bit more of an insight on the Chris's spomming. Spotting. <laughs> <laughs> What is going on, Chris? Why aren't we catching, mate? <laughs> I don't know, mate. It looked all right. When we first turned up in the morning, Like you had so much fizzing over your spot. But you did. Unfortunately, with it being quite a new lake, it, they, 
really do spawn quite successfully on here so you get a period at the moment where there's a lot of small carp in here like real small ones yeah and i think you just had a big shoal of them on, the, on a spot in front of you just ripping the bottom up i agree so baits on them for ages I and did. just not going i did i've not seen fizzing like it like you said it was like a jacuzzi out there wasn't it, it really really was yesterday went from a pop-up to a bottom bait to see if they were being picky with yep. it or something yeah still nothing like bigger baits like you mentioned we've tried haven't we've tried the bigger baits we've tried different food particles in the pva bags whether that be crushed boilies pellets sort of tried every scenario now but it's quite apparent that the fish i wouldn't say are out in front of us in their numbers are they like around the rest of the lake would you say yeah definitely mate i think we are still we've been lucky enough well we can see them from the bank anyway but yeah. when you put the drone up we can see how many fish are out there mm, yeah sure enough, we're yeah. seeing maybe one or two shows yeah. there was maybe at the best maybe five fish yeah in the yeah. peg yeah and the other areas of the lake they're getting huge numbers along their island i think where this island's maybe a bit smaller and it's you know tucked away i think out in the open water more i think that's where the, the greater numbers of fish are i agree and our, and our it, islands farther furthest away from where the fish are in no, their, in their i totally numbers. agree I, I totally agree that peg over there in front of us chris there's a bar isn't there that runs through and we're seeing a lot of fish show and they've obviously been catching quite yeah. a few as well haven't they is there a bar that runs through yeah mate so like like any lake the center of the lake's always a great yeah. spot anyway but yeah horizontally through the two middle pegs you've got a um a bar straight through the center of the yeah so uh, two and three and 12 and 13 will fish towards that bar gotcha um, and obviously it's a lot a lot shallower so it's like maybe like the width of a car so it's gotcha. a decent old area yeah and it's well, that's where the fish want to be in this warm weather don't they mate They're, yeah i don't disagree and i think that's what they're doing they're casting on the bar or casting really tight to some of the bigger islands in the middle and they're having mate someone had like three or four fish out in the night in the, crazy, in, the, in, the, in the daytime as well had a few fish out so you know the lake's doing bites it's just really feels like we're not seeing enough over in here i might even i'm thinking about maybe having a move at some stage yeah if we yeah. Can slot in somewhere maybe else. it might give us a little bit more of an advantage because at the moment we're sort of clutching straws at the moment because you can only do so much and the only it's one of them i would say is obviously we've got two more anglers turn up yes here. we have yeah and I, I think with this lake like, it always fishes better at the weekend it's, and it's because it's busier there's yeah. more lines in the water there's more bait going in there's more fish being pushed around the lake gotcha i think when you have big areas of the lake with nobody on it I think um, they can stay away from you a little bit so luckily I think someone's gone into your left and my right yeah and what'll happen is we'll move move on to some fish and then we're creating the safe spot again our swim yeah, will be yeah. the spot where they want to come it's inevitable you know, we'll wake it? up in the morning they'll be fizzing <laughs> over our spot so yeah it's difficult to know what to do really but I think I think certainly changing to maybe more of an island spot for tonight come off the baited spot for me yeah and then I'll keep an eye on the baited spot. If I can see any fizzing, any shows or anything over it, yep. then I can switch back to it. I'm all clipped up. I know the clips do it, so I can just swap spots. I think um, I think it's as good a guess as any, mate. I'm going to do the same. Obviously, like I said, I've got one in front of the island, trying to sort of replicate. Obviously, obviously we saw them there, clear as day in front of your peg, and there was oh, the yeah, odd mate. fish showing on the end of mine, but not quite like there was over on Chris's side. That was were popping out of the water, oh, weren't they, mate? And, the, and, the, and the lilies, the, the, yeah. the fish that we saw, I mean, come out the water, didn't we? Right on the lilies was crazy. So they were they were there, um, but yeah. So we're going to sit back now, lock onto the water over the duration, and just hopefully we can nick something, mate. Eh? Yeah, definitely, mate. Keep plugging away at it. Plan of action. So this morning, um, I don't know if I mentioned to you, but on the left-hand side on my spot, um, Chris mentioned to me that it's been doing some bites over the duration of the last couple of weeks on that on that margin. So what I've done is this morning, I went over there, found my clip um, quite quickly, put the rod out on the spot, put some foam out on, on the hook as well, wait for the foam to obviously pop off, pop up off the bottom. And then I put literally two handfuls of bait over. Obviously, after having that fish this morning, I very quickly then reeled that rod in and put it back out on the spot. I've just been sat here with Chris, like I mentioned earlier, and I've just seen a fish clatter out right on top of where I put that bait. So I think for oh, what's well, a no-brainer, I've got I've got to do something about it. So I'm going to pull off the main spot because I know that's still live. There's bait on the spot. The fish can go in. They can feed comfort confidently and i can then revert back to putting a rod there this evening but being that it's shallower water over on that margin i think it's a no-brainer being how hot it is at the moment to put a rod over there so what i'm going to do is i'm literally fishing very very simple setup big old leg on lead on there because i'm dropping the lead every time 
these are this is a five ounce lead to be brutally honest with you it's a distance lead but i love the way it plugs into the bottom if you're fishing tiny little bits of salt and also something a little bit different but i'm fishing a six mil ring on the top of that i get these made for me um, i just feel that it makes it a little bit more uniform and looks better on the bottom finishing it off with one of our no, new og fruit and nut pop-ups in the pink followed up with a two bait uh lot of mesh sock there with two bits of foam on the hook simple stuff so there it is i'm going to get this rod cast it out over there Right, so I've just cast and the foam has popped up, so you've got that visual. Again, you're probably not going to pick that up on the camera, guys, but it's just down here. So Chris is next to me now, and I'm literally going to put 10 baits directly over the top of it. Spray them all about. That one was about a foot off it. That one was two foot off it. And basically, you just get them round, getting the fish pecking, and hopefully then you can just pick up one of them bigger fish. But there it is. Worth a try. Got to give it a bash, haven't we? But look at that for a view. Absolutely beautiful up here. Seagulls having a play. That's there's a monk there <laughs> <laughs> lovely jubbly and that's where the other people turn off over the back there but look at that beautiful it is so so hot it's nearly 30 it is a sheer hot one really 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 hot one um but one thing i needed to to touch on guys um in this video and also quite uh, excited to announce and if you weren't already aware um, that we are having a Parker Bates open day. Now, on our website, what you can do is you can go over to our website, it's £5 a ticket, and, and that, that ticket's not to make money, it's merely so we know numbers, because obviously we're only a small family-run business, we can only cater for so many people, so that way then we can then order food. So with the £5, you get either a burger or a sausage, um, or, uh, uh, sorry, a burger and a sausage and a cake as well. Sean the chef's coming down and another one of my good friends as well. So they're going to be doing that. So that will be included in the price. And then we can also allocate them parking for people as well. So we're going to park people up on the field so the cars are safe, etc. So what can you expect on the day very, very quickly, guys? So we've got um, a couple of talks. I'm going to do a full production line. So there's going to be a... I'm going to set up all the machinery and me and Tom are going to do a live demonstration on why we put the ingredients we do in the bait, how we do it, the steaming process, the dusting process. Again, I'm already saying too much, guys, but again, it's in a great more depth on our website, so I'm going to be doing that. Corey's coming down, Mr. Longcast himself. He's going to be coming down and doing some sort of helping out with casting so whether that be adding wraps to you showing you how to do wraps quicker more effectively without twisting your line how to tie shock leaders on just generic stuff but if you get it right and do it properly it's a game changer an absolute game changer this bloke's probably put 10 wraps on me if i'm brutally honest with you he, he really is a talented bloke when it comes to casting so that's that and also the caravan carpers are coming down so that's luke and lee and lee's going to be doing a, a demonstration slash talk on basic camera settings now we all go fishing to get pictures of our fish and um on the day he's going to do basic camera settings self takes light in um setting your flashes up all the all the intimate details that you need to know and the basics of camera settings basically he's going to be going over that on the day obviously we're going to have um bait there and it's going to be at a price that it's never been before um, exclusive on that day itself we're going to be doing some bundle deals i think in the process and obviously all of our products will be on sale on the day um, to save you guys a lot of money so there it is that is a bit more of an insight on the parker baits open day the tickets are selling out fast like i said and we've only got um a limited number of spaces to avoid disappointment if you do want to come to parker Bates open day we're based in southampton you're more than welcome to come down but i, I would advise that you get a ticket asap to avoid that disappointment because like i said we are going to have to shut this off soon um being that this video goes live in four weeks time so even then i know that even more tickets would have sold so there it is guys um i'm just merely letting you know about the parker Bates open day now I'm getting a little bit hungry, so is Chris, he's, he's in front of me now and we're going to have a little bit of a play with some um, sausage McMuffins, um, sort of rustler style if you like, sort of a McDonald's setup. Not something I've done before, but we're going to toast the buns and hopefully make something um, nice and have a good breakfast in a second. So I will record that, <laughs> let's get it. Right, so what we got then mate, so we got these rustler burgers, this ain't you done before Chris is it or? Yeah mate, once before and was pleasantly surprised if I remember rightly. Yeah. So, um, yeah man, uh, we'll toast the buns up so it won't be like cold. 
and then cook the burger separately and then stick it all together. Is that some cheese in there? Ketchup is it? Yeah, I think so, mate. Look yeah. at that. Yeah, cool. Just call me Chef Ramsay, mate. Look at that. Bit of cheese on top, toasting the buns now, McDonald's style. Lovely jubbly. A little burn, oh, effect, burn yeah. fat. Look oh, at that, mate. It looks really yeah. posh now. It looks like something you expect. You would. You would. <laughs> you would. You know what I mean? If you present that on a plank of wood to make it look a bit more fancy, you know what I mean? People would be off that. They would, they, they would. They came Ramsey prices for that. <laughs> that fine specimen of a burger. Look at it. Look at it. Jeez, how rustic it is. It could have gone on straight, but it didn't. It's effect, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, mate. It more I like that. Like right, I'm going to take them off now because I don't trust myself. Whoop. Jeez. Right, I'm going to put the camera down guys, but I'm going to put that in there and I'll come back to you in a second. So I've went straight in, ketchup's on, looking fine. That looks very appetising to me, you know, look at that, a little bit of, little bit of factor on the top, a little bit of char grill. Lovely, lovely. See, Chris is a bit more refined, he's doing his slowly over there. And, um, but I don't think mine's going to last. We were going to do a comparison, but I think I'm going to have to inhale this in a second. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll see you in a bit. I'm going to enjoy that. Right. I'm going to tell you what, I'm a changed man now after that. That was very, very nice. How much are these, mate? Are they expensive? They're normally the ones that are on offer, so if you've got a club card, you get them for like a pound. There you go. Time. A pound, I'll pay that again. You can see the ketchup there in the background, so I just topped it up with a bit of ketchup. Done in the Ridge Monkey. Time for a coffee now. Chris is just finishing off his, mu his, his muffin tops there. <laughs> so yeah, very nice too. And if you haven't done that, guys, definitely, definitely, definitely worth a try. And like I said, a nice cheap breakfast. Happy days. It is so hot. I know I keep saying it, but it is absolutely crazy at the moment. Again, nearly 30. And um, half past one now. I just thought I'd midi keep in the loop. Um, Chris has just redone his rods. Again, we've seen fish near that cable again, and there was a good one in the mix as well. Um, you can see that clearly on the drone. I mean, it was a, <laughs> it's a good fish. It dwarfed the fish next to it. Um, so there's obviously fish out there again patrolling them. They love, they're loving, absolutely loving them islands. And they're not, they're not up on the water. They're down and the heads are there, but they're just chewing and just randomly going down and just having one peck. You can sort of almost see the smoke come up, or the. Um, the silt sort of disperse if you like, or the, the debris on the bottom come up as they just take a little mouthful and keep moving across the bank. But yeah, it re really, really interesting to watch. But anyway, a little, little bit um, interesting. Gentlemen come around, they're actually fishing opposite me. Two blokes, they actually watch the channel as well, so it was really nice to meet them. And um, gentleman said, oh, you got any bait I can sort of have off you? So I, I sort of sold him a kilo. Um, not something I normally do to be honest, it was only because I had an extra bag with me, I thought you know what, you know, take a bag, anyway within five minutes of him putting the rod out, he's got oh, I'm in, I'm in, this is on your bait, so I was well, well happy with that and that put a smile on my face, I managed to get some drone footage of it as well, and then it come off, <laughs> but nevertheless, you know, there's confidence at its finest, you know, you've taken some bait within five minutes, put it in the water, bosh, fish on so that was quite satisfying but again no real real updates guys my rods are the same as where they were um, a few hours ago but again I'm not going to keep chucking them because one I don't think they're feeding massively in the deeper water particularly where I am but that right hand rod is on the money against against that island where I keep saying I see them I've got one rod on there on the money and if they do pull over that spot drop down it's a mouthful and it's game over so all I can do is sit back cross my fingers cross everything on my body Enjoy this beautiful day and um, just fingers crossed I can nick something before this evening. I think if I do nick one it'll be a bonus fish to be honest with you because I really don't think it's going to happen till later on this evening when it starts cooling and then fish proactively start dropping and feeding um, to a different degree because they are feeding at the moment. I've just mentioned that I'm not contradicting myself but I don't think they're heavily feeding. They're just taking the odd, the odd mouthful along that island, coming up, sunning themselves for a bit but again low to the bottom not high. You know, even rubbing against, flanking, it, it's, it's crazy, it's been crazy to watch, but there, anyway, I'm stopping on a waffle, and I'll see you later on. So, Peg 13's had an absolute screamer over there, with me and Chris were sort of looking over, screamer, and um, he's hicked into the rod, looked over, and he said, yeah mate, yeah mate, I've had it on the OG, <laughs> so, they went over there, within the space of, I would say, within the hour, they've had two runs on the bait, the fish are clearly out in front of them, granted, um, but yeah, that's a good angle in that, and uh, 
hopefully they move over this way and me and Chris have a little little go ourselves but it, it, it it's very apparent that the fish are over in that middle section like we mentioned uh, earlier very clearly but um fingers crossed you can get this one in but nice to see the parker baits doing the business again get in there my son four o'clock update time but <coughs> excuse me it's not the best update in the world because we haven't had any fish but very quickly what i have done is um, there's a massive flat spot coming right off my spot now but what i've done is i've actually put out another 15 probably yeah in excess 15 spawns i'm going to say over the top of the spot at the moment i'm not fishing that spot as i mentioned to you earlier i've got one on the island and one sort of sort of in front of me I, if i'm honest with you i did move that rod on the left hand side margin um due to a, a lot of fizzing in front of me so i thought i'll pull the left hand rod put it on there so i'm not fishing on the spot at the moment but like I said, I keep getting signs of fish feeding over there. I wasn't going to put the rods on it, but tonight, I, I, I guess the scenario is you put your, your eggs in one basket, and that is exactly what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to put two rods on the money. I'm going to take my time with it, get it right, hit clip perfectly, do the wraps, do everything perfect as best as I can, and literally sit back and just hope and pray <laughs> that the bait does its job down there. The fish move in, home in, and have a proper, proper feed. But that is it that is that's all i can say to you guys and that i haven't really got much more to to put across being that it's so so hot here you can sit you can chase fish all day but i don't think you're going to gain anything from doing that i think if we've seen proper proper shows myself and chris have reacted to it straight away put put leads on their heads or whatever it is to try and get that bite and it just hasn't happened but but we have got till tomorrow evening to make it happen and that's what we're going to do we're going to do just that we're going to do everything in our power over the duration to make that happen so i'm going to sit back now as i say every time when i get when i sort of outro the video i'm going to sit back lock onto the water and hopefully we can react to the fish and i think this evening when it starts getting dark when that temperature drops time for me to sit back get them rods clipped up and get them on the money where i just mentioned a second ago and hopefully like i said just hopefully it happens so there it is that's the update for now right so dinner time got some bacon going in there some nice soft rolls and some little hot dogs in there going so in a minute i'm going to come back to you i'm going to cook some eggs as well with the bacon and like i said in these nice soft rolls Lovely, lovely. Rolls done. Bosh. Oh no. There's always one, isn't there? I've had two beers and it's all gone. <laughs> That's it. Oh my word. Oh my like word. Look at them, sausage. mate. Lovely, jubbly. Got the sausages going. We got the bacon down there with the rolls. Eggs finishing up. We've only got three now. One, <laughs> like I said, is went on a little ride. But yeah, looking forward to our rolls with some ketchup, I'm sure. <laughs> right, here we go. You can see the croc there in the background. But we've got double whammies tonight. We've got double sausages. There's bacon underneath that. And then, yeah, that. Um, Dirty egg. <laughs> it, it did look beautiful to begin with, yeah. but I don't know how I'm going to get in the roll, so I'm going to take sort of smash just this got to up. Finger it in, Ben. I think I have, mate, haven't I? I just, just got, got to get involved. Flick it in, make it look pretty, and then bosh. Thank you very much. Dinner with a view. Come on the carp. Right, so dinner was lovely earlier. Um, we've given it a couple of hours, like I said, and now it's time to put the rod out. So there it is, OG fruit and nut pop up there with the white fleck in it um some og fish and 18 mils two of them in well it's actually there's actually one and a half they're in halves in a tight little mesh sock bag a nine inch boob section i've got a little bit of putty there to help sit that um, spinner rig on the bottom if you like nine inch boom there to give plenty of movement with a long kicker at the end there to make sure it shovels away from the from this lead on cast when i hit clip that one's going to go out on the left I'm going to repeat the process on the right hand rod. That needs to go out just in line with my finger now. 7.2, it's just over 7 it is. Come on.
is uh, rod number two very similar setup the only difference is I have got a little bag of PVA a little PVA sort of mesh bag there with flat spot float mi micro pellet different pellet with a tiny well, I say a tiny a 15 mil pink pop-up so that's the only difference you're probably thinking why are you putting all your eggs in one basket with a pop-up spinner is the only reason I'm doing this because I've had a fish on one of the pop-ups so that's exactly why I've done that same setup little bit of putty there nine inch boom let's get this rod out come on Well, morning guys, um, I didn't do sort of a, I was going to say, a lights out last night if you like, but um, basically the aerators get turned off at a 7, and in a second what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn you around because it comes alive here in the morning, there's like a monk down here, and all around that monk now it's fizzing up to high heaven, so I'm going to try and get a little bit of footage and show you now guys, but good morning. Um, <laughs> A nice little lay in. I mean, seven o'clock for me. It's quite a lay in. I'm looking all that crack of dawn, watching the water. But it's been nice and just because I had a very, 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 very busy week last week. So but yeah, I'm going to quickly sort of turn you around in a second and see if I can get some. All right. So there's fish in here, here, here. My bait's in between. So if you draw a line through, my bait's sort of in the middle. But it's all round here is the fishing. Again, it's that horrible light at the moment, you're not going to see it, but trust me now, it's like a jacuzzi around there. Whew, fingers crossed, and I think it's coffee time. I'll see you in a bit. Oh, you couldn't write it, I'm sat there, um, right hand rod. Bobbin pulls up, drop back down, pulls back up, I sees my line pull up, and then drops back down to the four, fud. So it goes up to my spool, twists it up, ties out, line pulls back again, but I've got it, this, it, this and um, nothing left hand rod as i'm dealing with that pulls round i'm into a fish and they got it all the way into the front just about to put the net underneath it's probably about a 10 pound it was a little common and um it, it pulled by the pulled by the net but i'm gutted anyway as i'm doing that christine gets a run so i'm going to pop over there now we said it's not very big i don't even know if he's put it back yet but um Chris has just had one pick one up over there next to me so it's mad like within all this time you being here and all of a sudden boom it switches on but anyway i'm going to go over that's positive rod's back out on the money by the way i've repeated the process handful of bait 18 mils og fish over the top on the left hand rod with the pop-up literally i've just went over waited for the phone to pop up and just threw a handful of bait over the top of it right hand rod right up tight against the island where i had the commotion before that i just mentioned to you again same scenario but i've used the catapult to get it out there so like i said i'm going to go over there now and uh see what chris is getting up to <laughs> that was a ma moment of madness mate wasn't it I thought it was all kicking off, thought we had some fish move into us. <laughs> yeah, all over pretty quickly, man. So, so what happened then, mate? Talk to me. You, you, you obviously, we both had one at the same time. I just mentioned in the video over there, you had one. It was, it was a small one. Yeah, really small. Yeah. Just yeah. Back, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. As I say, hopefully that's just signs of something to come. Although, hey, man. we were unlucky there. Yeah. So it'd be nice to get a few fish coming into this side. It's just dead out there, especially when it's hot. They got the sun comes up you get the cool morning you get the odd bit of fizz in they give yeah. you some sort of indication but now it's just bacon. it really all is all the fish that are going to be coming through here even though there aren't many of them will be tight to that island though and just very quickly mate what's that before you put it out well, well that's like changing <laughs> so i'm going to have one i've just had one on the zig um like six inch zig type tight to the island mm -hmm. um because they're not they're not backs out of the uh, out of the water they're not on the bottom they're sort of mid water so um, yeah, I think fishing a really short zig out there, like the, the bottom out there is a little bit weedy. Yeah. So sometimes I get a nice drop, sometimes it's a little bit softer and every time I'm bringing my baits back in, I'm getting sort of six inches of dead weed on it. So wow. by fishing a zig over the top, it doesn't matter if that lead plugs into the worst bit of weed out there. You're still present, um, It's just dead weed, so it ain't that thick. So um, so yeah, even, even better to be fair, if the lead plugs into a bit of weed, I just think the hook bait is going to be even closer to the weed and even uh, sort of less detectable from them. But, yeah, yeah, clear mono hook link, they ain't going to see it, mate. A little pellet, and then on the other one. Yeah, come on. Because I just got done on that got one. Here. I'm going to have one out there. Yeah. And this is just a, <laughs> gone back to basics, straight mono rig, 12 pound mono, with a little wafter in it, sinks real slow, and a bag of pellet. You know, yeah. you can't go back to basics without using pellet. No, you know, no, I agree. I'm here, so hopefully, by keeping things simple, maybe I can just get a small one or just get a bite, just get something. 
but can you get it out there? Yeah, happy yeah. days. Right, well, I'll yeah. let you get out, mate. I'll quickly get him uh, casting, guys, so you can see exactly where he's going. So if you are coming down here yourselves. <laughs> no pressure, mate. <laughs> days right, well Chris has just lost one over there again uh, well not again but he's literally lost one over there and there, there's fish over there and their numbers they're all around that island all in between the lilies and the island right up against the bank and they're literally chewing the side of that bank and they're there and there's a couple of good ones in the mix as well so they're definitely in Chris's side there over in that swim hopefully he can start sort of flicking a bit of bait out there keep him in the spot keep him rummaging around and hopefully pick up a fish but fingers crossed Next time you see one of us, we got one in the net. Look at that wind trickling in. It looks absolutely beautiful. Come on the carp. <laughs> Look at that, mate. That's mental, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. Guess a male and a female, man. That's wow. Cool. How interesting, mate. Completely different colours, aren't they? Right. And they were both underneath my busy bivy. I sort of put it, we found one, the orangey one, and um, all of a sudden they're making a little puppy noise as well. I reckon we get them back in. The yeah, shade. let's get them back in, nice mate. Right. Well cool, How mental is that? What a way to end. Or well, nearly end. We're not there yet. Oh, there we are. I jumped. And they saw safety. Off they go. Oh, cool, man. How cool is that? Off you go. Listen. Would you believe it? There's another one, so I'm going to put it back with the other ones. Here you go. Go find your mum and dad. Oh! <laughs> Us knockings now, the bivy is away. Most of the stuff is in the car, palm. My bag in front of me and a few essentials that I need for the last hour. Hopefully, the wind's not affecting that, guys. But um, just, we had a quite a moment there. It was quite lovely. I'm sort of packing away the bivy, and then there was these two toads, two completely different color colours I don't know much about toads, but I'm guessing it was a male and a female. It was, yeah, really cool. With that, put them in the bush safely so they were safe out of the sun because it really is hot, like I keep mentioning. And um, there was a little baby one as well. <laughs> So I dropped that over and again put that safely over there with his mum and dad. So that was quite nice and nice to see Chris in action because he did actually catch something. So. <laughs> <laughs> now we've been having jokes here the last couple of days it's been absolutely brilliant to be honest with you guys and been been really great to get out with Chris we've, this has been arranged for a long time although the fishing's not been Bob on this session um, due to not having fish in front of us it really has been a pleasure to be out with Chris and um, what I will do is just before I leave guys I'll keep you in the loop but the rods are all positioned on the money I have seen fish over the spot against the island I physically can't do much more so time to sit back now enjoy this last hour and um, like I said I'm sure I'll keep in the loop before I leave I'll see you in a bit <sighs> well <laughs> I'm still smiling but it hasn't happened and the rods are on the floor next to me if I'm brutally honest with you and <laughs> I'm a little bit guided but it is what it is it's been a pleasure to be back here at Orchard Lakes on Jimmy's Lake um, like I said the specimen water before if you do want to come down to yourself guys if you message the Facebook page you'll get an automatic response and it'll give you the, the info the number etc for the shop you can ring up you book on and that is how you get on this particular lake so if you do want to come down guys um, that is the best way to do it the other thing I would advise to do is if you haven't watched our previous video here and I do a much better session and I do have some fish in that particular session I do quite well actually I think I fished a 27 pound it's a nice common go over check that video out the reason for that is wow on that I touch on the shower facilities and I think I actually go up and get some proper video of that as well so you can see that with your own eyes alongside the toilets as well you got the shop up, up they got the shop up there and you've also got a cafe now which wasn't done last time and again I think I've already touched on that in this video apologies for it not being the longest video in the world um, but it is what it is you know I'm, I'm just like you guys as as is Chris you know you turn up at the lake 
if you've booked that peg you're on that peg and you've got to deal with the scenario in front of you and try and make it happen it just hasn't happened this particular session and i don't think we've had the fish in front of us that other people have had around the lake excuses aside so there it is hopefully you've liked this video guys if you have make sure you go down below and click on that thumbs up button smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos going forward um, and hopefully i've brought you a banger and i'll see you same time next sunday 7 30 all the best peace out